we have our spreader. What you don't want is the gap in your ring. Oh, we're having problems, Ted. It's not that exciting. You asked for these videos. We're gonna keep seven. We're gonna keep giving them to you. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. Look at beautiful stars. I wanna drive a faster car. Hi guys, welcome back. Today, pistons. So uh, off camera. I've done seven of the eight pistons, put the rings on, given them a check over. I've been through as well and I've weighed them all to make sure that they're all pretty much exactly the same weight. Because if some of them vary in weight, you want to try and balance and offset the, uh, the different weight pistons across your V and across front to back to make sure that your engine still runs relatively even. Um, if you really wanted to, you could weigh them all down um, and find the lightest and make all of the other heavier pistons, you could shave bits off of the inside of the crown or so on and so forth um, until all the pistons were exactly the same. In a relatively low, um, V8 anyway, relatively low horsepower engine, um, it's not a massive, massive problem if the pistons are a few grams here and there, but um, if you were going for high power and high output, it's the sort of thing you might wanna look into. So uh, piston number eight of eight, I haven't put the rings on yet, so I can talk you through putting the piston rings on um, from piston to piston, brand to brand, engine style to engine style. They're all different. They all have a different sort of type of rings and so on and so forth. But the premise is the same. So we'll start. With these three. So we have our spreader, which is this, and these two, which are identical, which are your oil rings. That's better. Do that again. So you have these three, which is one is your spreader, and these two rings, which are your oil rings, they're identical. So they will go, funnily enough, in the bottom slot, which is the widest. So the spreader ring does exactly what it says. It spreads the other two oil rings. The only thing to note, really, um, I'm going to put them by hand. You can quite easily put them on by hand, but you, there are tools out there, piston ring spreader tools, if you're gonna do this regularly, but I don't do many engine builds. The only thing to note is to make sure you are aware where your gap is when you put the piston rings on. Because what you don't want, when I've got them on there, What you don't want is the gap in your ring to meet the gap of the ring below it. So I don't want to put that on now so that the gap lines up with this one. It wants to be 180 degrees away. So, there's the gap for the top, there's the gap for the bottom, so I'm going to take the bottom one and I'm going to move it round. That's so, when the engine's cold, and when these piston rings are at their smallest and they have a gap, you're not going to get oil and or compression coming straight past the rings with ease because it will have to come past this ring and then find its way around to the other gap and go past the second ring. 
kind of obvious when you say. The next ring is the first of your two compression rings. What you have to make sure you're aware of is, if you can see it on the camera, there's a dot just next to my finger. So any dot or marking you see on your piston ring, that's a note to the top. Again, that then goes on the next slot up. Once again, I'm just going to put it on by hand. They're not um, particularly stiff. You can buy a piston ring spreader. So I'm going to put that one with the slot lining up with one of the gudgeon pin ends. And then, funnily enough, the top one that I put on, I'll make sure the slot lines up with the other gudgeon pin end. So they come in numbered boxes, so if you leave them in the boxes, you'll be able to know which one is number three, two, and number one. So you won't mix them up. So that slots this side. And that slot is this side. So they are 180 degrees apart. That's kind of all there is to it with putting your piston rings on. And then you want to do exactly the same across all eight of your pistons, or four of your pistons if you're building a four cylinder, or 12 of your pistons if you're building a V12. So our pistons and our rods and our gudgeon pins and our main cap bolts are all new. So they haven't yet been anywhere near the engine, which means that none of them are numbered. So if you're taking pistons out, you want to number them and you want to give them a direction. So you want all of them with the arrow facing the front of the crank or the back of the crank, and they want to be numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so you know where they come out of. Because these are all brand new, they don't need to be bed in when the engine's running, but because they're also because they're brand new, it doesn't matter which piston I put them into. The only thing that you've got to number to note with a 302. I'll come round and show the camera again. The main end, the big end of our comrod, one side is chamfered. And the other side has only a very, very slight chamfer. So when you put these on, they go on in pairs. Bow side up, like so, and you want to make sure that the chamfered sides face outwards and the small chamfers face each other. That's the only real thing that denotes where they're going to go when you're using brand new. So I'll do one for demonstration. You have your piston ring compressor, which mine's not particularly brilliant, but I don't, once again, I don't build many engines. So, one piston ring compressor. So this holds the piston rings in tight to the piston when you're going to push it down the bore. That just sits over, clamp it up tight, and then offer the piston into the bore. I'm going to just put some oil down in there. When you're doing this, there's no such thing as too much oil. I'm going to oil the ball. I have already oiled them, but again, there's no such thing as too much.
give it a little tap around the outside, just to make sure. We're just going to wind the main cap bolts off, the big end cap bolts off, and we're ready to go. Another thing to note, when you take your big end apart, is to make sure you know where your tangs, your little notches were. Sometimes they're opposite, sometimes they're on the same side. Make sure that you put it back on the way that it came off. It's made as one piece, so it needs to go back on the way that it came off. So we're gonna wind out our ARP bolts. Ready to fit. So our piston goes in, valve side up. So the valve side of the piston facing the top of the engine. And quite simply. Slides into place. Problem said. Ah, one's dropped out before it wanted to. That's why. Take two. Little tap. Make sure that all the rings are in, and it should. Like so. That's in, that's now flush. You only want it flush for the time being, you don't want bottom of your connecting rod to be hitting anywhere. You notice that I've got the crank turned in such a way that it's as far away from that ball. So once you've got a piston in, it's time to pay a little bit of attention to your big end shells. Much the same as the main bearings, the unseen face wants to be cleaned. No oil, anything like that, because it doesn't want to be able to move once it's set in position. So I've uh, got some of my degreaser. We'll clean the back. I mean, they're clean anyway, but. Um, an extra bow won't help. And I did clean and degrease the back of that shell before I put it in. But I'll go again. And then just want to be able to, if I just turn the crank around a bit further so you can see, line up that big end shell with the tang or the little lobe meeting in the same place as here. One thing I will say is both the top and the bottom of these big end journals, bearings, there's a drain hole. So they would ordinarily line up with a drain hole or an oil feed hole in either your rod or your cap. But in both the rod and the cap on here, there isn't a drain hole. So it doesn't matter whether they're top or bottom, which one you use for which. Just matters to get them in right. So you just want to offer it in and they should just push fit. If they don't push in, it's a wrong. 
ones in there, like so. And the other one is your cap. So you're just going to move those bolts out of the way. Give that a spray. the same again. Once they're in position you use all the oil you like. You don't want any oil getting in between the bearing face and the cap or the bearing face and the comrod. Little wipe down. I prefer using bits of off rag or microfiber rather than tissue because it leaves no residue, no bits behind. <laughs> Wife. Then you want to swap out your degreaser for oil. Plenty of oil on the crate journal. And a smidgen of oil on the big end journal. Bring the crank round. Then just gently knock the piston down the bore until it meets the crank shaft. Then, as I said earlier, make sure that you line your cap back up the same way that it came off, which was the tangs were both on the same side. So, pop your box in. And much the same with your main caps, you want to wind them both down equally, make sure that they seat down the both at the same time, so that when you torque your bolts, you know that you're getting a true torque rate and then you're not putting one up more than the other. For a minute, I'm just going to wind them down by hand. And they're 11 mil, 12 sided. close up the front and back, which it is, make sure it all looks okay, and then torque it down. So I am going to do what I did on the mains, and I'm going to torque them under torque first and gradually one bolt at a time quarter of a turn per bolt until I get torque just a surefire way of making sure that your bolts are tightening down at the same rate so that was 40 and now I'm going to go up to 50 foot pounds And then all the way up to specified torque, which to my knowledge is between 62 and 65 foot pounds.
Very good. And then do all of that again. Seven more times. Can you still see my head? Yeah. So for the purpose of good YouTube, YouTube view and pleasure, I'm not gonna stand here and film myself putting all eight pistons in because once you've done one, or in this instance, really two, um, you've done them all. However, I am gonna film putting the second one in, so cylinder number five, simply because when you put these pistons in, they are put in and bolted onto the crank in pairs. So, um, for the purpose of some kind of educational, uh, instructional video, that this may or may not be, uh, I am going to put the second piston in while I'm filming, and then I shall probably just either time lapse or or do the other six off camera because it's not that exciting. The reason I'm going to put two in now is because, like I said earlier, the bottoms of our piston, uh, the bottoms of our comrades are handed essentially because they've got a small shaft on one side. And a big chamfer the other, and the chamfer and the chamfered side needs to face away from the other rod. So face the crankshaft on the chamfered side, face the other rod on the almost non-chamfered side. I think it's to do with the oil being able to get oil feed, oil drain. Uh, but I'm not really sure. It's just the way that they have to be. So uh, I'm going to oil this up, get the ring compressor set up, um, whip the uh, cap off offer it down to the number five and get it bolted up. It's gonna look exactly the same as the first one did, but you asked for these videos. We're gonna keep selling, we're gonna keep giving them to you. Quickly just buzz those off. These can be quite stiff to get off sometimes because they're dowelled, but um, they should be okay. Just rock them back and forth. And they'll go again like I said earlier make sure that you know where your tang marks were whether they're opposite whether they were on the same side um, because it needs to go back on the way that it came off I know I'm repeating myself but I'm basically doing the same thing over again I've got to do it six more times yet feel sorry for me Again, lots of oil. You cannot put too much oil on these when you're installing them. Big end shell is clean. As you can see, I just heard the crank a little bit more. That there, this is the bottom end of the piston we've just put in. And you can see the uh, the slot at the top, the tang mark, and the slot on the bearing. It's all clean and degreased, and it just pops in there. Like so. Easy peasy. Do the same with the big end cap. And then we'll just pick it up, turn the crank, offer it on, bolt it home. Much like you saw earlier. Place it on. Offer your bolts in. 
any eagle eye view will see that I didn't put any uh, assembly lube on these bolts because it's already been pre-applied. I am putting it on there, don't panic. And then I'm going to talk more over again. Quick reminder, hit that subscribe button, the like button, and then the bell button. So you get alerts when we release new episodes and follow us on social media too for extra stuff and more alerts about videos we're releasing, which at the moment is every Sunday and the odd Wednesday too. Bye for now.